All right, well, we might as well get started. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Gunn. I am coordinator of digital scholarship here at Catholic University of America Libraries. Um, today's workshop, one of many we've done in the past, uh, is working with Tableau. And we're going to be, this is an introductory, uh, uh, introductory workshop. And we're just going to be working through uh, one of the tutorials that Tableau provides. And just to give you a sense of what sort of um, um, features that Tableau has that you can use with working with your data. Um, so let us go start moving forward. I have, I have a short little PowerPoint demonstrate a uh, PowerPoint here, so I can assure you it's very short. So our goal is today, we'll work through a sample a data set that uh, Tableau provides, very useful one. We'll build a chart, a map, and a visualization. And from there, we'll create a dashboard that you can use to present to prospective you know, um, bosses, supervisors, that sort of thing. Then if we have time, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can publish it on the web. So that's generally the goal is what we'll do today. Um, one of the big things about um, using Tableau, which I really like, is that you can really tell a, um, a story, a narrative, um, from the data. So you can make your data come alive as, as you will. And I put a little list here of uh, a little uh, short article here that um, you'll use. I will send out all of the recordings and any handouts and that uh, at the end, um, at the, uh, once we get the recordings available, I'll send everything out to everyone. So just to let you know. Um, I put this in here um, regarding um, um, the different types of Tableau that are out there. Um, I started using a Tableau public, but I thought it'd be better since we have students, majority of you are either students or faculty, and you have as students and as faculty, we have different options that you can get with regards um, to, to using this full package. So you can get by with Tableau public, but I will be using Tableau desktop today. So uh, don't panic or anything like that. Um, I'll show you um, uh, how, how things work moving forward. Um, Tab Tableau public's the free one and like with all free things, they strip down a lot of it. Um, if you're a student, uh, current student, no matter where, uh, you get a one year annual renewal. Um, to uh, Tableau desktop. So every year when it comes up for renewal, you can, uh, as long as you're a student, you can renew it. So if you're here for four years, great, you get it for four years. So that's very useful. I think more students should be aware of this. Um, for faculty and lecturers and instructors, there's a other uh, complete uh, dimension to this where you can have a lot of, uh, you demonstrate that you're using this in, in class, you're using it for your research. And you'll get a whole bunch of, uh, oh dear, modules and uh, help and support and text and a whole bunch of different stuff that you can use to build a nice uh, uh, projects for, uh, for coursework for your students. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use this. Um, if you're made of money and if you want a individual um, subscription, you can get one, uh, I believe it's $70 a month. So it's kind of pricey. Um, I suspect the university may have some subscriptions around, uh, but you would have to talk with your department heads to see how that would work. Um, sort of the people who have been left out as I've come to understand, there's a few of you here who are staff members, not students, not faculty, and you're sort of left right now, unless your department has a subscription to this, you sort of left with Tableau Public for the time being. So it is kind of um, really a multi-level you know, uh, subscription service that they provide. Um, usually um, when I do these um, sorts of workshops, um, I'll use open access software, for example, open refine to clean data, for example. Um, I've done um, workshops with Excel because Excel, even though it's proprietary, um, Basically, everyone has it in some way, shape, or form. So it's easy to do that. With Tableau, you're getting into much dicier territory with regards to accessibility and what you can access. So 
anyway, some of the limitations here I just put up here that I bore from this site, Rigger uh, Data Solutions. So I, I won't bore you with the details here. I'll send it out later. And I have some useful links here that I'll also give to you um, as we move forward. All right, so that is that. I'm gonna go right up here and I'm gonna Okay, so here's the Tableau uh, website, um, which I actually take a look at. I highly recommend taking a look at a lot of the material um, that's available here. They have a whole bunch of different products that you can use. So that you may have access to, as I mentioned before. Um, under Tableau for students, can, can everyone see this Tableau for students? Yes. You can, okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, so you can go in, if you do uh, get Tableau for free, I'll let me just move this out of the way here. So if you have free student license, you click on this, you'll get teaching uh, to request a license as well. So it's kind of weird the way they have it set up, but just fill in the information, you'll have to demonstrate you're a student or faculty. It's not too hard, and then you'll, you'll get access to it, so. If not, you're regulated to Tableau Public. So, all right. Uh, we are now going to go to, if you want to open up uh, Tableau on your um, computer, that would be great. Um, you may have to toggle between what I'm going to be showing you and how to use it on your own, um, on your own computer. However, I'm going to show you what I'm doing today so that they have a number of great tutorials here. And in the chat box, I'm giving you a link. And I will tell you, I'm, I'm basically going to walk through this um, tutorial that they have. Um, and show you how um, show you the in and outs of Tableau. So um, this is basically very much the beginning, the the essential constructs to pre to, pre to uh, preparing a presentation essentially. So if you can do this much, then you're basically um, off and running. And there's so much more to the software than what can be presented today, is what I'll say. All right, so that's it there. I'm just going to be working the way through. So let us get started and get to the main menu here. So I'm now sharing my Tableau. So everyone should have this open on their screen if they don't. And if you just want to follow along and just see how things come together, that's fine too. Like I said, you've got a link to the um, to the tutorial so you can just uh, you can see how it works all right so here we are so the first step and take a look is i always like to look at what is uh, available to us so we have this whole thing called tableau server that you can go search for um what can i tell you um unless you have a good subscription to that you're not going to be able to uh, go too far with it so um, if you want to upload different files and that, you can use all these different types that you um, that are available listed here. So everything from uh, KML files here to text files, you know, TXT, that sort of thing. Excel, if you want to migrate your uh, Excel uh, spreadsheets over and all that sort, uh, all these sorts of ways you can upload your data. So you can also go to a server if you want to do that. We're not going to Come close to that. So you can keep track of all your projects on here. You can open your workbook here. There's a ton of training here, just a ton of it. It's, a, it's amazing what they've done. They really want to get the word out. 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to go to um, Sample Superstore right here on the bottom left-hand corner. Oh, and oh. Okay, so I clicked on this Superstore and I've loaded up some data here and you can immediately tell Alongside side here, that sort of tables, you've got orders, people, returns, that sort of thing. So we're gonna be using a lot of these different uh, columns and rows and that as we go forward. Right. So first thing we wanna do, we've got this uh, data set essentially. So we wanna do some work with it. First thing we wanna do is we want to go to the data pane and that's what this is here, data right here. We're gonna be pulling all our stuff from here essentially. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna do, we're gonna drag the order date to the columns field. So here's the order date. I'm holding down my left button on my laptop and I'm just gonna drag order date and put in columns. So immediately we've got some sort of a spreadsheet here, not much of it, but definitely something here, um, listing our years and then some text as we go through it. So we've got, got to add a little bit more here. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna go down here, look on the left-hand side here, we're gonna grab sales. And here we have sales listed here, just the last four years. And you'll notice little points with a line drawn. So, well, it gives us a very basic um, demonstration of our sales seem to be going in the right direction, which I guess is a good thing. But we definitely want some more information to come out of that. So, we want to get to know the software a bit more, um, the data set a bit more. So from the data pane, we want to drag category to the column shelf. So we look over here. We're saying, where exactly is this? You'll notice what I had to do here. See that category was hidden. So I had to click on the down button for under product. So let's take column, drag it again to the columns. And now we're getting some more information here. So we have a bar chart and we have something down here that looks like furniture, office, something, technology, interesting. So we're now we're getting to look at our data. So these are, um, discrete dimensions, right? Uh, they're, they're not on a con continuum as the last line chart showed, um, sort of deceptively, that we're at, we are actually looking at discrete data. So bar chart allows us to do that. We'll get more into that in a little while. So we have furniture, office, and technology that we're looking at. We want to know, you know, which ones are useful and which ones are not. We notice uh, technology here is going uh, dipped a little bit, then went up really quite a bit. So that looks kind of encouraging. We notice office furniture dropped a little bit, but still continuing. So there seems to be a little bit of variety there. So we might want to dig into this uh, categories and see what else we have. So I'm going to take the subcategory. I'm going to drag that to the column shelf here. And whoa, here we go. We get even more information here. So those three big categories are suddenly, um, we're getting a lot more here. So chairs, um, tables, art, envelopes, labels, all that sort of thing. So we get 
starting to get a, a bigger picture here of what we've got available to us. All right, so next step. So we want to look at some of these results here. So we're going to go to the data pane once again, and we're going to look at the order date. We're going to right click on that. So here's the order date right here. We're going to right click. Ask for show filter. You'll notice on the right hand side here, we had the filter come up by the year. So that's interesting. And we also want to do the same thing with the subcategory. We're going to right click at that and we're going to show a filter. All right, so now we get to look at we can select what we want to look out and block out the rest, um, which is what filtering does. So we look at this and we see a lot more different uh, products listed here. And we find that, um, you know, we this is very interesting in that, but we can also use um, you know, we can change it up a bit and make it look a little bit prettier. So what we can do is we can drag profit right here under data. And you'll notice there's two different profits. There's the profit bin, which is listed up here. And then further down, you have profit that's listed by itself. So we want to take this one. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag it over here to color. And here we go. We have this particular color. Color scheme that's listed right here. We have blue, orange, slightly darker orange. We get a sense that looking here under sum and profit. So the blue means, dark blue means we're making a profit in this area and the light orange means uh, we're losing money. So. That's an interesting way to look at that. Uh, just do this for a second. I put the link back in the chat as well. Again, so if you're following uh, following along that way, there you go. All right, so here we are. We've put in the color. You're able to get a clear picture of what you're making money on and where you're losing money. So, you know, you've got some unprofitable products here. So you have to delve in a little bit further and see what sort of uh, key insights you can um, come from this. So uh, looking at uh, this particular view. So if we look on the side here, we can clear everything out. So if I were to cl click on all, I would lose everything. What I can do is I can concentrate on bookcases, machines, and tables. And there you'll notice right away, um, got some really mostly orange, a little bit blue here, but mostly orange and red. Um, so we're definitely some money losers here. So we've got to figure out what, why are we getting this sort of thing, um, this regard. Is there any way we could break the information down further? So what we can do is we can go back to subcategory and select all. 
what we can do on the data table here is that we can look for region. And it doesn't appear to be region here. So if we look under location, oh, there we go. We have a lot more ways that we can uh, look at it from a region or a particular postal code, that sort of thing. So we're gonna take region and we're gonna drag it to our rows. And aha, uh -huh, we've got even more excellent information. So what we have here is we have four different regions, central, east, south, and west. So if we wanna burrow down even further, we take a look at this and we can see that one of the places that is really orange, at least on one particular item, in this case, technology, is in the south. So that is worth further study. So if we were to take all out and just show machines, we can see again, a different way of looking at that information as well. So I'm gonna go back and just select that again. Now at this point, I think we've found some interesting information. So we, I think we should probably save at this point. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go down to sheet one here, double click on it. I'm gonna say sales by product, uh, product and re region. So now I have my first uh, worksheet that I can have, that I've saved. All right, so what we can do, so we want to focus on the South, but we want to lose what we've um, acquired so far, since we all have all four regions here. So what I can do is I can right click on this and I can duplicate it. There it is. And we'll say, we'll call this uh, sales in the South. There we go. All right, so what we're gonna do is now at this point, we've got our new spreadsheet sales in the South. So we wanted to do drag the region to the filter section. So here we are under our data table. Again, we're gonna to go to the region. This time we're gonna drag it up to the filter section here. And we're gonna get a little pop-up box that says filter region. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna deselect everything else except south. And then just go with okay. And there you go. We just have the south as the region listed here. So we're gonna focus a little bit more. You'll notice oh, you'll have to scroll left and right a little ways, but that's all right. You can see the whole thing right there. What we're going to do right now, we're going to save as And I'm gonna save this as regional sales and profits. There we go. So 
So at this point, what you're doing is that you're applying the filters and color to make it easier uh, to focus uh, on data that will, be, that will be of interest to you the most. Uh, you want to interact with your charts using the tools that Tableau provides. And you definitely don't want to use the duplicate worksheets and save your changes as you're moving along. That way, if you do um, really screw up in that sense, uh, you're still able to um, build from what you've saved. Now, we talked, uh, we start off looking at um, the South, but I think we can get more specific in that regard. Uh, where, what parts of the South that we're looking at, uh, what particular states um, and cities. So what we can do here, we can look at some of those trends or patterns. So what we'll do, so we'll do a new worksheet right down here. We'll click on that. So we have a new worksheet right here and we got Look over here, we're gonna click on, we're gonna drag um, state. Oops, oh, there we go, all right. So I drag the state. Uh, actually, let me hold, uh, let me stop. I went one step too far. If you look at the top left-hand corner here, you have the undo button. So you can just click on that and that will undo your work. If you take a state and move it to the marks section, pardon me. <laughs> oh, there we go. All right, here we go. If you select state and move it to details, there you go. So you have country listed under here as well as state. And as you can see, you already have a map view. At this point, I wanna drag region to the filters section. I'm gonna bring this up here. And it's gonna say, okay, so what? You want the whole country? Well, we just want the South. So we're gonna do okay for the South. And now we have Southern, uh, Southeast corner of the country. All right, so we have the geographical location, but now we need to add the sales. So if we look on our data table here, we go down here, we see sales listed here. We're gonna drag this. To the color box under marks. And boom, we have states that are highlighted and you'll notice the sum sales pops up here showing you know the profits uh, that the stores are making in this particular state. So it looks on the surface that Florida is very uh, um, profitable, whereas Louisiana and perhaps Arkansas and Alabama that are not. So it sort of looks that way, but you have to be very careful moving forward. So, um, Blue's kind of, you know, bluish green is kind of a boring thing to do. So what you can do is you can click on the colors in the mark card. And when you do that, you'll notice you can edit colors. You can click on that and this will bring up a further box. And what you have here under the palette, it's a whole range of, uh, uh, of color options and within each option there's a range of colors. So in this case, uh, what we're going to do is select the red green uh, diverging. This one right here, there we go. We're going to click OK. And here we have something that doesn't look all that great to be perfectly honest. Um, it's kind of weird. So but you do have to play with the color uh, a bit. So 
you know, I, I, I particularly don't like the color blend here. So I'm, I'm going to undo this and I'm just going to click on the undo button and go back to that. So what else can we do here? We can take, we, we put sales uh, and we did that under color, right? But we can also do profit right here and put that under color as well. So let's do that. We're gonna take profit, put in color, and here's what we have. So some profit and with a different range here. Um, more specifically, we're now getting, you know, just not um, the gross profit, if you will, but also uh, the net profit. So we're losing money in some of these states, it looks like, and um, we're making money. So look at Florida. Florida went from uh, 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 something that looked like it was making a lot of sales to something where they're actually kind of losing, losing money right now. So. All right. So we're going to have to drill further a bit down, uh, take a look at some of these details, you know, why this is. So we notice that Tennessee, uh, North Carolina, and Florida both have negative profit. So we want to look um, uh, a little bit more into detail here. So we're going to double click on sheet three here. And we're just going to call it profit map. There we go. And we're gonna duplicate this as well. We're gonna right click that, create a duplicate. There we go. And we're gonna rename this one. Negative profit bar chart. Hey, guess what's coming? That's right, a bar chart. So. So at this point, um, we wanna see what we can do, uh, what sort of data visualization options we have with regards to this. So bar chart, naming this the bar chart sort of gives it away. So what you can do is you can go up to show me right here in the top right hand corner. And if you click on that, all of a sudden you're going to have uh, a number of different ways that you can present this data here. And this can be quite useful. So what we're gonna, what we're going to do We're gonna select the horizontal bars here. And this gives us another view, if you will, of where our profits are, where our losses are. Um, this show me isn't um, pull down menus now in the way. So I'm just gonna click on it again and it disappears. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to look at the, uh, the, the losses specifically. So we want to only, uh, we want to keep only the, uh, these particular ones. So what you can do, so what I like to do here is hold down the control button, then click Florida, North Carolina, and Tennessee like that. And when you do that, this pull up menu will come up and see, it'll say keep only, exclude all this sort of stuff. So we just wanna keep only. So I'm gonna click on that. There you go, Florida, North Carolina and Tennessee. I should point out here, um, just the, right over here where it says the inclusions under country that you'll notice, I put this over, there's two, two circles. It's demonstrating that there's a, um, a set. So if you wanted to go in and take a closer look at it, you can edit the particular filter that I won't do it right here, but just to let you know, the inclusions are referring um, to what we have done so far. And that some, 
um, states are have been included and other states have been excluded. It's basically the takeaway. So at this point, we're looking at the states, but we can definitely burrow down further. So if you load under the rows section up here, you have a little plus menu here. So I can click on that and it will now give me the cities. So we're now at the city level and we can see what we are dealing with, who are the biggest losers in this case, looks like Jacksonville here. And you do, in this case, you do have to scroll down um, a little ways in Burlington, North Carolina. And then Tennessee has a few, uh, uh, a few cities there as well. So at this point, you have a lot of information that's coming at you. So what you can do is you what you can do is at this point is maybe want to put in another filter. So you can create a top end filter, is what it's called. So in order to do this, what you can do is you can drag the city on the left hand side here to the filter shelf right here. And you'll notice all of a sudden all the cities that are listed will come up. And if you go to top here, you can range by field. In this case, we're going to select top and we're going to look at the worst um, five entries here. And it's going to be organized by profit and then sum. So in this case, what you get, oh, I spelled negative profit. So you don't have anything listed here specifically. So you're looking at this data and you go, you know, something's kind of weird here. Something's not working quite right with regards to this. So we're gonna click on the undo button. I'm just gonna correct the spelling there, there we go. So um, Tableau has an order of operations here. Um, so what it does, it, it, it applies filters in a logistic order uh, from extract filters to data source filters, context filters, top end filters, dimension filters, and then measure filters. So you have to be uh, careful where exactly your, end, your top end filter is going to be listed here. So if we're going to go to this, we're going to select city again. We're going to go under filters. Oops. All right, we're not, that's not going to work. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to inclusions. And we're going to right click on here. And we're going to select what is called add to context. So what's happened is the inclusions has now turned gray. So that has been reprioritized. So at this point, if you go up to city and do postal code,
we are getting only a number of um, items here. Listed here. I think I may have to go back here for one minute. All right. Yes. Oh. All right. So that is not going to be doing that. All right. All right, I was having a little bit of a problem here with the occlusions. If I right click on this and add to context. Now I'm supposed to be getting some different results here than um, um, I'm getting different results here that I normally should be getting, so I'm not too sure where exactly I fell apart here. But let me not, let me continue on here. Let's see. We still have our data, we just haven't been able to narrow it down as much as we want to. So I'm gonna click on this. And postal code listed here. Unless, of course. Yeah. Okay. All right, I won't belabor this point here. Um, so looking at this, you do get a sense broken down by postal code, by city and by postal code, what your uh, profits, um, your places are, are uh, losing money here, so. So if we want to look at our subcategory here, we could drag it to the row shelf. And I'm actually going to take this out. I'm going to take subcategory here and drag it to the row shelf. And what we now have is uh, the states listed, the cities, and now where exactly they're, um, which ones are making money, losing money, that sort of thing. So you're looking at this and you're asking yourself different questions, you know, uh, here is Fort Lauderdale, some of the big ones here, machines in Jacksonville, um, binders in Miami, this sort of thing. So if we drag the profit to color Again, we have a better idea of what we're losing, uh, where we're losing money in that. So in the data pane, you want to order the date. You want to right click the order date. And you want to show the filter. Right here. So again, we have the year and order date and where things are making losing money. In this case, most of these are, are money losers, as you can tell.
All right, so we can start to label these. So what I can do is I'm gonna do profit. I'm gonna drag this to label. And if I scroll down a little ways, I have profit label, a profit ratio right down here. So I'm gonna drag that as well, put under label. And right here, you can tell the numbers regarding your profit profit ratio right uh, right in the chart. So at this point, we'll look at the order date and we want to select show filter. Okay, we have to scroll up here. We have to right click and show filter. of that. All right, so taking a look at our data listed here, we're looking at particular ones, uh, in this case, uh, machines um, listed right here, really bad, uh, binders, they're also a huge option machines again. So we're looking going through there, we find that binders, uh, machines and tables um, are really uh, ones that uh, we're losing money on. So all right, so let me do this. Not it. All right, so I'm going to go back to profit map here. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to do subcategory and select by filter. Wait a second. There we go. So we have subcategory of our different objects, services that we're selling. And from the data pane, we're gonna do profit as a label. And 
to profit ratio as a label as well. Now we're gonna go back to order date. And we're gonna select show filter. You'll notice we have the year, the subcategory and the sum profit list in here. You'll also notice in here that we have the particular profits and profit ratios listed. So if we want to take it, we really want to break this down. We can take out binders, uh, machines and tables. And you'll notice right now our all of our orange and red and all that turn to blue, green and blue. So this really tells us, reinforces the point that um, we're make, we're losing money on these three different areas. So that's a good way to play with your data to understand it. All right, so now I want to create a dashboard here. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new dashboard. And what we'll do is we'll go up top here. It says dashboard. It says new dashboard. There it is. You'll notice it's down here as well. You can work on. You notice on the left hand side here, we have all these particular sheets. They're also down here, but you should work with the ones that are listed here. What we're gonna do is take sales in the south, and just drag it over here. And you'll notice that we have something that we can begin to use as sort of a presentation. We also wanna look at profit maps. So I'm gonna drag this. And I'm gonna put this down here. Too far down. You'll notice how the gray changes here. So you have to make sure you put it in the right place. And that is not where we want it. So what we can do is we can move it up here. And there we go, we just switched it around. So you can see both views at once with regards to this material. But you do want to clean it up a little bit. So on the sales in the south here, what we're going to do is we'll right click under the region column header. And then we're going to remove the show header. So we just have that part there. So right now we're gonna right click on the profit map and then hide the title as well. There we go. And we're gonna remove this as well, hide this title. There we go.
So we want to take a look at some of these. And you'll notice when you pull over here, you have a number of things that you can do. With these, so you can remove the first category header just by clicking on the X. All right, so you have this here, you can click on that and you get rid of that. use that. In this particular case here, what I can do is I can drag year to date. Oops. And what I can do with this is I can create a single value slider right here. So now if I go back, click on this, I can now use that to look at my profits going forward. There you go. So I'm going to click on that. There we go, we'll clean that up right there. Yeah. So you can use that. And what I should do, you'll notice I was trying to move it back and forth and wouldn't do it. What you have to do is you have to select floating. So now I can move this anywhere on this particular map and because it becomes much nicer to look at in that regard. So if we want to make this map a little bit interactive, we can click on the profit map. We can use as filter. And then what you can do is you can use a particular, click on a particular state. And it's not quite working as the way we want it to. So as you click on a state, you should see this change down here. So what we can do is take this, we can apply this to our worksheets. And then what we can do is select in worksheets Then you want to select all of dashboard and then go OK. Now let's see if that works. Not quite. OK, so I'll leave this as it is. You do here have interactivity with regards to the year of data. As you scroll along, you'll notice the bottom changes. So you do have that dimension too, but you can set it up where you're clicking on a state and have that interactivity. So at this point, I think um, I will stop.
Um, you do still have a uh, step number seven um, to build a story to present. Um, it does, as you can see, take a little bit of practice and the steps are kind of um, complicated in that sense. So you really do have to be working with your data and practicing with your, um, uh, with your data and making sure that you can um, uh, making sure that you can get the, the different dimensions to work. So um, as you can see, teaching it from one step to another can be quite um, uh, quite engaging and complex. It was, I had a much smoother ride this morning when I practiced it. So um, at this point, um, I will field questions. If anyone has any particular questions. There we go. Yeah, uh, so uh, if you do have um, a project that you're working on, if you need uh, some consultation that, uh, you can definitely contact me. Uh, my email is gun, G-U-N-N, at cua.edu. And that, um, um, again, it, it'll take some work um, working with your particular project. And it takes practice. But after a while, you should be able to get uh, decent at it. Um, it very much depends how well your data is working and how clean it is as well. So um, thank you everyone for coming out. And I once I get the recording done and all that, I will send along along with the, the handouts I've gotten that too. So or the PowerPoint presentation, I should say. So uh, thank you very much everyone and enjoy your day. Thank you, bye. Bye-bye.